Today I want to talk to you about a problem that I've been thinking about off and on for a long while. It's actually more of a question. And the question is, what would I do if I had a lot of money? I remember as a kid watching the musical Fiddler on the Roof. You may have seen it. The main character there is Tevya. He's a peasant, lives in Imperial Russia around the time of World War I, and he sings one of his songs, and it's, If I Were a Rich Man. And this kind of caught my imagination as a kid. When I grew up, we didn't necessarily have a lot of money. There's a lot of confusion with lots of kids in the house, etc., siblings. And I sometimes find myself just, you know, if I were a rich man, fiddle deedle deedle, you know, just singing that song. It would just capture my imagination. It kind of fueled me along with this idea of what would I do if I had a lot of money, right? And more recently, I've thought, well, is there a modern equivalent of if I were a rich man? And I think it probably has to be if I had a hedge fund, right? You know, one of these companies where you take other people's money, you invest it, make a lot of money for them, and a lot of money for yourself also. I'll seed, however, that, you know, if I had a tech firm would also work in today's world. But for me, it would be, I'd go for the hedge fund, right? So if I had a hedge fund, what would I do with this hedge fund? Well, part of my research focuses on trying to understand how society organizes capital in order to create public goods. So you might ask, what's a public good? Well, a lighthouse is an example of a public good. And you might wonder, how do we ever get these things built? I mean, they're certainly valuable. We know lighthouses are valuable, right? But they take effort to build, and they have this very interesting characteristic that once you build a lighthouse, and you take it and put it up on a hill, you can't stop people from using it. That's a fundamental characteristic of a public good. So how do you get people to pay for using it? Right? If you're in a ship, the captain's sailing by, he looks up and sees a lighthouse, he can use it. You can't force him to pay. So how do we organize the money to get things like lighthouses built? And there's a bit more, because ideas are like lighthouses. If you have an idea that will solve a problem, an important problem, and you put it out in the public domain, it's like putting a lighthouse up on a hill. Anybody can see it, anybody can use it, and you can't force them to pay for it. Right? Now, I'm interested in problems that are you know, really hard problems, that will take maybe years, even decades worth of concerted effort. Not something you can kind of do just as a weekend fling. How do we get people, how do we organize society so that we can actually get these kind of problems solved? So let me be a little more concrete. I'm interested in trying to cure diabetes. I'm talking about type 1 diabetes here. So people who have type 1 diabetes, that means their body no longer produces insulin. If they're going to live, they have to monitor their blood sugar, and they have to inject themselves with, with insulin. And this is a hard problem for a number of reasons. First of all, it's scientifically hard. By that I mean we really don't know where to go next with the science. There's some promising um, avenues with stem cell research, but if you sit those guys down, the scientists down, and say, how much money do you need? How big of a check do I have to write in order to make sure we can come up with a cure for diabetes? The answer is they don't know. This problem is also hard economically. And the reason it's hard economically is you think about the firms that are best positioned to try to come up with a cure for diabetes. These would be the pharmaceutical companies. But the pharmaceutical companies actually have a fairly strong disincentive to come up with a cure because they make a lot of money treating diabetes. Right? They make money selling monitoring devices, insulin, and if they come up with a cure, all of that revenue goes away. So this is a really a hard problem to think about. Okay? So here's my hard problem. Let's assume that I have a hedge fund. Now what? What should, what should I do? Well, my solution has got two parts to it. The first part is an ever-growing prize, and I'd combine that with something I call a patent repository. So let me start by explaining the ever-growing prize. So the ever-growing prize essentially is a pot of money that just is going to grow over time. And it would be structured something like this. We'd have a nonprofit, I call it the Cure Fund. People can donate to that. Since I have a hedge fund, I can add the hedge fund in there. Hedge fund does what hedge funds do. It will take the money that's donated, invest it, and then create more money, which I'll pour right back into the Cure Fund, except for a little um, slight management fee. And I'll do that just because I have to pay the people running the hedge fund. Every hedge fund makes their money by essentially charging a management fee. But because I own the hedge fund, I'm going to make that fee very thin. 
right? I'm not going after buying private islands. I'm going after curing diabetes. Now, this is a fairly standard structure for most foundations. They take donations, they have a pool of money, they have some kind of asset management group, it's either internal or they contract that out, and they try to grow that pool of money. The real exception here is that this pool of money has a very targeted purpose. Primarily, it's there to pay people who come up with a cure for diabetes. I can do more than this, though, because there's other people out there who care about curing diabetes. They have money, but they're not ready to donate. But since I have a hedge fund, I can actually offer an investment firm to them. So I could create a companion fund. So the companion fund will take their money, it will use the hedge fund technology, invest it, create more money, and, and they get the money back, the people who put it in. I mean, it's an investment, it's not a donation. But I get to charge a management fee. And this time, I'm not going to charge a really thin management fee, I'm going to charge the market rate. And I'll take all of that money, and I'll pour it back into the cure fund. And I might actually get a tax credit that I can send back to the investors, so maybe I can charge a little bit more than market rate. That's really not a really important point. The important point here is I've got three ways of pooling money from people who care about trying to come up with a cure for diabetes. Now, this leads us to a really important question, which is, how much money do I need? How big should I let this prize fund get? And this is a question that economic theory really can't help us with. There's some guidelines in economic theory. They'll say things like, well, you don't want it to be too small. Okay, we know that, because if it's too small, no one's going to show up. They'll say other things like, well, you don't want to be too big, because then you, you paid more than you really should or needed to. We could have solved other problems. But if I push people, economists, and say, well, let's, let's build a model, and let's come up with a number, the amount of simplification you have to do about the world, and the number of, quite frankly, heroic assumptions you're going to have to make, are going to make that answer that comes out really untenable. I mean, some of the heroic assumptions would be things like, we'd have to agree on the probability of giving a group of researchers a certain amount of money, what's the chance they're going to actually come up with a cure? Come up with some kind of breakthrough. And we already said, this is a problem we don't know how to answer. So, the solution that we're going to go with is we'll start with a pot of money. And essentially, we're going to run a sequence of experiments over time. We're simply going to let that pot of money grow and grow and grow until we have enough money to start getting the economy to reorganize itself. You can imagine, if I get enough money in this type of a fund, that I'll have groups of scientists breaking away and saying, look, we think we have a way to cure diabetes. Go to some venture capital folks, get money, get a special purpose research company. This research company doesn't care if curing diabetes makes it so you don't get money from treating diabetes. What they're targeted now is just simply coming with the cure and the money that's in the prize. And so this is somewhat of a new idea. Instead of trying to decide how much money up front, we're simply going to let the sequence of experiments reorganize the economy until we have essentially the minimum amount of money needed in order to come up with a cure. So that's the first part, the ever-growing price. The second part is the patent repository. Let me introduce this with a quote from Isaac Newton. So Isaac Newton said, if I have seen further is by standing on the shoulders of giants. And I think most people believe this. I believe this, the way science works, it's a cumulative enterprise. You have a bunch of ideas, people come, they read those, they think about them, they add to that and they grow the base of science. So here's a question to ask yourself. What happens if the giants, whose shoulders you're supposed to stand on, take their ideas and they patent them? All right? What happens is restrictions. You have to wait. 20 years before you can use the idea, or you have to license and then negotiate a license and pay a fee. So the primary idea of the patent repository is to take those restrictions that come from patents and undo them, but just for a very targeted problem. For example, for the problem of curing diabetes. It would work something like this. Companies that have patents that could help with the cure of diabetes can license them to the repository. It's for limited use, just for curing diabetes. The repository takes all those licenses, puts them together, and then makes them available to everybody out in the general public. And this is kind of a, you know, a cool, noble thing to do in some ways. You, know, you get to be a giant. You get to be a giant, at least for diabetes, and let people stand on your shoulders. It's not really practical, I'll admit that, right? I mean, and it's not going to pay bills, it's not going to you know, keep the lights going. And I'd like to have the structure, whatever it ends up being, being both 
noble and practical. I want to be able to try to push both parts of human nature to try to come up with the cure for diabetes, right? So I want this structure to be structured so that if you put an idea in the repository and it is actually critical and used in curing diabetes, you get part of the reward. So the way I would do that is I would have something called a cure fund, excuse me, a cure patent. And the cure patent works like this. It's, it's essentially the roadmap. It tells you everything you need to do in order to come up with a cure for diabetes. And the person submits it. This, this cure patent could be based on entirely new ideas that they've come up with. It could be based entirely on ideas in the repository, or it could be some combination. It doesn't really matter. So people submit the cure patent, then they have to validate the cure patent. And it burdens on them to validate. And by validate, I mean they have to go through phase three clinical trials. We'll let the FDA be the judge as to whether they can actually have come up with a cure. If they come up with a cure, then the funds are dispersed. People who came up with the cure patent, they get part of the money. People whose patents were used by the cure patent, they get part of the money. Okay? So everybody's rewarded. And this is not just a reward, though. This is an exchange. Because when the money goes out of the cure fund, then the intellectual property goes into the public domain. So everything in that cure patent goes into the public domain. Essentially, we are putting a lighthouse up on a hill. And anybody who comes by and says, I want to cure diabetes, can look and see how to cure diabetes. The cure fund is society's way of saying, this is what we'll pay in order to have the lighthouse built. So I, I told this idea to some colleagues, and I had one particular professor of accounting who gave me a bit of pushback. And he said, why don't we just, you know, do, with what, do what we've already been doing, you know, kind of stay with the course. Why do this new idea? And I was like, it's a cool idea, you know, I like it. And that wasn't the most convincing argument I could come up with. I, I realized that. So he gave me a little more pushback, and I said, okay, let's think about this. So if you're thinking about standard approaches that are used for building lighthouses, solving problems, motivating people to create public goods, we're really essentially talking about what we call push mechanisms in economics. So push mechanisms are subsidies. And you've got foundations, universities, these are the main tools or entities that are working in this space. And, and first of all, you have to think about scale. So universities are wonderful for getting people to think about hard problems. We give professors tenure and we let them say, go off and just think about hard problems. But, but we're talking about aggregating a lot of resources. One or two professors in their office just thinking about this is not going to come up with the cure. We need more scale than that. But the other challenge with push mechanisms has to do with incentives, right? The folks up here in the foundations, the government, they have the money. Folks down here are doing the research. How do you make sure their incentives are aligned? I, I don't know if you, you have kids, if you do, or if you're a kid. Um, you know, push mechanisms are kind of like paying your kids to do the chores before they do them, if that makes sense. Here's another way of thinking of it. The cartoonist, Willie Meyer does the non sequitur cartoon, has got a nice panel about this. He's got two scientists, Ralph and Frank, and Ralph has done it. He has come up with a major breakthrough. So Ralph is, woohoo, I've done it, I've found a cure. And Frank says, that's great, now what will we do? And Ralph's a bit confused. He's like, what do you mean? And then Frank takes a moment and explains how the economics of push research works. He says, well, now that you've come up with a cure, all of our funding is going to go to another division. There's a moment of contemplation. Ralph processes this. He kind of repositions in his mind, and he has a new assessment. Woohoo! I made a breakthrough. This would require a lot more research. Much better. Now, I'm going to see that this cartoon's a caricature. But I believe there's some truth there. See, I'm in the game, at least I want to be in the game, of putting up lighthouses. I want to pay the people that put them up, not the people that sit and think about how to put them up. All right? With diabetes, I don't really care who comes up with the cure. I don't care their ethnicity, I don't care their gender, I don't care if they work for a prestigious university, one of our major biotech tech companies or pharmaceuticals, I don't care if it's some you know, group of guys or girls or whoever in a, you know, a company in a scruffy backwater in an industrial park in rural America, I don't really care. What I care about is taking this hedge fund, and this money I can organize, this capital in society, 
and taking that money and putting it in the hands of the people that make it so that my brother, my nine-year-old niece, my friend's 12-year-old son no longer have to take insulin. That's what I care about. And I believe there's a lot of people that feel the same way I do. I think the money's out there already in society to cure diabetes. The trick is simply organizing ourselves differently. So, final point, and this is kind of in the spirit of full disclosure. Um, I actually don't have a hedge fund. I know. But if you do have a hedge fund, or a tech firm, that would work also. Or you know somebody who does, or maybe a major conglomerate. Um, and you'd like me to help you think a bit about how to change the world. Give me a call. Thank you.